Ogbenigwe, the deadly mass destruction missile that made the Nigerian Federal Troops G3, was a product of the scientific feat of the breakaway nation of Biafra. It was allegedly the first technology to be wholly designed, developed, mass produced, and launched in Africa. It was used in combat during the Nigerian Civil War, and at the height of production, about 500 units were being produced every day in Biafra. Ogbunigwe, also known as Ojuku's bucket, was based on the physics of the Moro or Newman effects. The weapon was named after the Biafran head of state, Chukwemeka Odumegu Ojuku. The missile killed and maimed by wave effect percussion and dispersal of shrapnel. It was shaped either as a cone or cylinder and could be used as a ground to ground projectile against troop concentrations or a ground to air anti personnel air burst cluster bomb. With the economic blockade of Biafra having a telling effect, the people turned inwards, devising survival strategies and apparatuses. Apart from extracting and refining their own petrol, they also had improvised armored tanks and piloted their planes. The renowned professor, Gordian Ezekwe, led a team of scientists in what was known as the Biafra Research and Production Unit, RAP. This think tank group was tasked to develop rockets, bombs, and telecommunications gadgets. The Ogbenigwe mines and warheads generally had a killing range of between 180 meters and 800 meters, an effective sharpening radius of 90 degree arc, and could easily wipe out a company of enemy troops. The self propelled rocket versions had a missile range of 8 kilometers. The weapons were destructive for enemy infantry and armored vehicles. In October 1967, the Nigerian federal troops, having captured and secured Enugu, the capital of Biafra, were on their way to Oka and Onicha, the commercial nerve center of Biafra, through the old Enugu Oka Onicha Road. The well armed, heavily equipped Nigerian federal troops, with their superior firepower, encountered a battalion of poorly equipped, outgunned, and virtually exhausted Biafran troops at the Uguoba Bridge, a few kilometers into Oka. However, the Biafran troops had on hand some of their air defense dust mines. Unable to withstand the superior firepower of the federal troops, they began to run for their dear lives carrying along with them their air defense mines. But their bold and stalwart commander ordered them back and commanded them to fire the mines on the approaching federal troops. The command was promptly carried out. Indeed, the federal troops could not understand what hit them. The effect of the detonation was very devastating, leading to the loss of many federal troops, as well as the loss of large quantities of arms and ammunition, some of which got completely burnt. The Nigerian troops were so mortally afraid of the Ogbenigwe that each advancing battalion was preceded by a herd of cattle, and many cows lost their lives. March 25, 1968 probably remains one of the most memorable events of the war. It was the day the Nigerian side suffered the heaviest single loss in the war. Known as the Abagana Ambush, the second division of the Nigerian army led by Colonel Murtala Mohamed had finally crossed the Niger Bridge after falling in the first attempt. Mohamed's forces had been repelled by Colonel Joe Hannibal Achuzia's guerrilla army and had suffered heavy casualties as well. Having crossed into Biafra, the plan was to link up with the 1st Division led by Colonel Mohamed Shua, penetrating the Igbo heartland through the north from Usuka. With a 700-man team led by Major Jonathan Uchendu, a counter-attack plan was hatched that essentially sealed up the Abagana Road, while the troops laid in an ambush in a nearby bush, waiting patiently for the advancing Nigerians and their reinforcements. Major Uchendu's strategy proved highly successful as his troops destroyed Mohammed's entire convoy within one and a half hours with about 500 casualties on the Nigerian side. There was a minimal loss on the Biafran side. It was probably the most resounding battle ever won by the Biafrans in the entire war. The Ogbenigwe was the most effective Biafran weapon during the war, and the Nigerian forces were not able to find an efficient defense against it. Well-placed mines or rocket salvos, coordinated by few determined soldiers, 
were often enough to stop an entire Nigerian advance. The Ogbenigwe, in its various forms, was able to influence the outcome of many battles. It was indeed a weapon of mass destruction. <laughs>